Hi, I'm Jada, virtual assistant for the Ultimate Economic Hedge Class webinar. I will be assisting Mr. Leader, president of 2 Broke to 2 Billion LLC and creator of the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report and Class webinar. Hi, I'm Will, virtual second assistant for the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. The whole purpose of this webinar is to educate you about financial opportunities that have been kept from middle class Americans by the banks, the rich, and even our own government. By design, our economy and our monetary system are meant to keep you working, dependent, and broke. From the time you are born, until you die, you are considered an economic slave, or a labor resource. No establishment ever tells you information that will break your financial dependence on your job, the government or the banks. Think about it. You were told to get a job, not to be an entrepreneur, or an investor. You were told to seek good benefits. And if you fall on hard times, apply for your government safety nets. You were told to finance a home, finance a car, finance your education, and even finance and HDTV, which are all dependent on credit from the banks. All of this advice is absurd, especially with all the financial opportunities available. Being dependent is not American. Being independent is American. We celebrate Independence Day on the 4th of July, not Dependence Day or Codependency Day. You were given all this advice, but these establishments will not empower you with the right knowledge to take any type of action that will break you out of the dreaded rat race. Only people who know the true struggles of the middle class, the unemployed and the economic slave, who have a passion to educate others will share this type of information with you. But, most of them want to charge you thousands of dollars for seminars that are meant to upsell you bigger seminars and more products. Well, that is not going to happen here. You paid your $199.99 to learn, not to be sold more products. You want to walk away from this webinar with information that you can begin applying immediately. And that is exactly what you are going to get. In fact, we were going to give you something, instead of sell you something. The value of our gift actually exceeds the value of the class. But, because we want to see you succeed, we were going to give you this, instead of upselling it to you. What is it? Well, you'll find that out later. You trusted that by purchasing this class, webinar, you would get real financial education. Our goal is that you get more than that. This webinar will educate you, but it will also empower you to take action. After you take the first step, you will feel a sense of renewed purpose. Continue taking action and implementing the strategies, and you will enhance your life. So with that said, and without further delay, let's get started. I introduce to you, Jada. Thank you. Now, I would like to introduce Ultimate Economic Hedge, UEH. We all face the inevitable forces of taxes, debt, inflation, and retirement. Because of our current monetary system and the ever-increasing necessity to expand debt, these forces are inescapable. Where some of us may know how to use these forces to our advantage, the majority of people sadly are victims to these forces. They are economic slaves who sell their labor in exchange for artificial representations of value. While selling your services, or labor, for a wage is not bad, relying solely on one paycheck to secure your financial future is insane. This is true, especially when you factor in taxes, debt, inflation, and retirement costs. In our recent research, we have discovered what we would call the ultimate economic hedge, or UEH against taxes, debt, inflation and retirement. This UEH covers all bases for financial independence, wealth creation and wealth preservation, from establishing the foundation of your wealth to fruition of your financial fortress. Through methods that involve unconventional ways to extract wealth from the stock market, yes, the stock market, and using the true wealth of human and natural resources to secure your hard-earned monetary value, we have discovered the ultimate economic hedge. The UEH is also an overhead-free, simple strategy for investing owning businesses and acquiring other assets, without incurring huge amounts of the risks and liability. This is an income-producing, low-risk hedge against taxes, debt, inflation and retirement. The UEH investment strategy is comprised of seven sub-strategies. Today you will learn these seven amazing sub-strategies. They include Incorporation, knowing how to protect your assets, isolate liability and form legal entities. Capital gains, knowing how to generate instant cash with, and from, every transaction. Passive income, knowing how to create a passive monthly income from equity and debt. Compounded returns, 
knowing how to create inflation beating exponential returns. Hyperinflation hedge, knowing how to hedge against inflation, protect purchasing power. Value appreciation, knowing how to increase value with a tax-free strategy. Family banking system, knowing how to create your own private banking system. So, that's what we are going to cover. You will learn exactly what these strategies consist of and how they work. We even have resources for you in the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. Plus, if you have the unlimited email correspondence with your purchase, you can ask any questions you may have at any time. And now, incorporation. By forming a legal entity, you effectively and strategically shield your personal assets from any litigation that may result from business operations. Through a legal concept called a corporate veil, which separates business owners from the legal entity, the owners of a corporation, limited partners of a limited partnership or members of an LLC are afforded what is known as limited liability. Incorporation, or forming a legal entity, protects you from full liability. This means you are only liable to the extent of your investment in a business, and all of your personal assets are protected from business liability. As long as you don't co-mingle personal and business assets, the corporate veil usually cannot be pierced. But, by forming multiple legal entities for different business operations, you can isolate different levels of liability from others. When you incorporate, you file what is known as Articles of Incorporation or Articles of Organization with your respective state Secretary of State and then file for an Employer Identification Number or EIN with the IRS. This creates a separate legal entity which can own its own assets and incur liability in its own name. This distinguishes the entity from its owners. All accounts and transactions are in the name of the separate legal entity. Legal entities can be established for any lawful purpose. They can be created for the purpose of executing business operations or solely for holding assets. Because a legal entity does not physically interact with people, but can do business and own assets in its own name, they are a great way to separate your name from any property which could bring litigation upon you or could be in danger of being taken through your own personal liabilities. Assets should be controlled through legal entities and not personally owned by individuals. With the exclusion of maybe one or two small bank accounts, it's reasonably unsafe to hold a substantial amount of assets in your name. Business which incurs, or carries, high liabilities should be conducted through properly constructed limited liability companies, C-corporations, or limited partnership entities with a C-corporation as the general partner. Properly constructing your entity and following all legal formalities, for example, state filings, minutes and tax filings should keep you from incurring any personal liability. A legal entity can be used for holding personal assets, valuable, safe assets, holding business assets or conducting business operations. Learning tricks and tips to setting up the proper entity for your situation, establishing limited liability and protecting your assets are vital. Before you begin acquiring assets or doing business, you must establish a foundation. Incorporation, or creating a legal entity, is that foundation to your financial fortress. And now, capital gains. The stock market. Most people get nervous when they hear the word stock market. Most people don't understand how to properly invest in the stock market. When people invest in the stock market, they usually try to buy a hot stock when it's perceived to be undervalued and try to sell it when it goes up. The problem with that is, you are basically gambling with your cash. And, a majority of the time, you stand to lose more than you can possibly gain. For that, you might as well buy a couple hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets, because you are playing with the same type of dangerous speculation. When uneducated people invest in the stock market, they often buy a stock at the market price hoping it will appreciate in value, or they set a limit price, and wait for their order to be executed. Both of these strategies set you up for, failure. You either win or you lose. Those are your only two options. But, there is a better and more advantageous way to play the stock market. And it truly gives you options. By trading a derivative of, a security, for example, a stock, bond or ETF, called an option, you can effectively place yourself in a win-win-win situation. How can you be in a win-win-win situation in the stock market? Well, for one, it's the options market, and two, I'll explain here. By trading two simple types of options, namely naked puts and covered calls, on world-dominating dividend growers, master limited partnerships, publicly traded real estate investment trusts, 
business development companies and fundamentally sound corporations, you can virtually create money out of thin air with little capital output and little risk other than the obligation to buy or sell the underlying asset in the event the option is exercised. In the options market, an option is an agreement to buy or sell 100 shares of a security, that is, a stock, bond or ETF, at an agreed-upon price, within an agreed-upon time. If the security trades above, call option, or below, put option, the agreed-upon strike price by the agreed-upon date, or expiration date. The seller of the option is obligated to buy, put option, or sell, call option, if the option is exercised by the buyer. The seller receives a premium for selling the option. If the option is not exercised the seller keeps the whole premium. This can be repeated as desired. As banks sell fraudulent, toxic derivatives into the financial markets, they create huge counterparty risk for others and themselves, all while getting rich in the process. Trading options is a legitimate way to sell an insurance policy to a position holder or prospective position holder and earn cash in the process. You would be essentially selling securities just like the big banks, but without the huge risk, toxic debt or fraudulent and deceptive practices. How does it work? Let's say you want to own shares of XYZ stock, but XYZ stock is currently trading at $10 a share. You feel that $10 a share is too expensive and you want to buy the stock at a price you agree is more reasonable. You decide that you wouldn't mind owning XYZ stock at $8.50 a share. So, instead of waiting for XYZ stock to go from $10 down to $8.50, you click on the stock's option chain and view the available options on XYZ stock. After evaluating the options chain, you decide to sell a put option on XYZ stock with a strike price of $8.50 and an expiration date of January 1, 2014. For the purpose of this example, this particular option has a bid price of $1 and expires next month. What does this mean? This means that if you execute, sell, this particular option, you will receive a payment called a premium in the amount of $1 for obligating yourself to buy XYZ stock at $8.50 if it trades below $8.50 after expiration. That's how it works, but here are the rules. A put option is a contract that gives the buyer the right but not the obligation, to sell 100 shares of a stock if the stock falls below an agreed-upon price, strike price, by a specified date, expiration date. A put option is a contract that pays a premium to the seller for taking on the obligation to buy 100 shares of a stock if the stock falls below an agreed-upon price by a specified date. So, XYZ stock put option symbol would look like this. XYZ 0101 2014 8.5 P or XYZ Gen 01 2014 8.5 put the bid or sell price would appear next to the corresponding ask or buy price the bid is usually less than the ask price at $1 per share your premium or payment would be $100 because each options contract controls 100 shares of a stock if you decide to sell 10 contracts you would receive a $1,000 premium for a 1,000 share obligation, obligating you to $8,500 of XYZ stock if XYZ stock trades below the $8.50 strike price. After expiration, remember 100 shares equals $850, so 1,000 shares equals $8,500. With a cash secured option trade, this cash would be placed into an escrow with your broker until after the expiration date. After the expiration date, one of two things will happen, a, the stock goes up or stays about the same, you keep the premium as profit and your cash is credited back to your account, or b, you purchase shares of XYZ at the strike price with the cash in escrow. In reality, you paid $7,500 for stock you agreed to pay $8,500 for, because of the premium you received up front. That is a great deal and an excellent trade. Although your premium could be slightly reduced due to commission, contract cost and brokerage fees, you can still come out on top if the premium is high enough or you are trading multiple contracts. A call option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation, to buy 100 shares of a stock if the stock goes above an agreed upon price, strike price, by a specified date, expiration date. A call option is a contract that pays a premium to the seller for taking on the obligation to sell 100 shares of a stock if the stock goes above an agreed upon price by a specified date. For this example, you already own XYZ stock. So, 
XYZ stock call option symbol would look like this. XYZ 0101-2014-10.0-C or XYZ Jan 01-2014-10.0-Call. The bid or sell price would appear next to the corresponding ask or buy price. In this case, whether you own a 1,000 share position in XYZ stock or not, no position is naked. You the seller would receive a premium for selling the right to buy XYZ stock, let's say at a $10 strike price. For example, if XYZ stock trades above $10 after the expiration date. Assuming XYZ has the same $1 bid, one of three things happens here. A. You keep the $1,000 premium as profit and you keep the stock you own the position in. Or you don't have to cover the stock you sold the naked, no position, call on. B. You are forced to sell the stock at the strike price, but keep the $1,000 premium and any capital gains. Or C. You must cover, or buy, the stock to be sold at the current market price, and suffer a loss. Covered calls are a better choice to reduce risk. Math is not one of the most favorite subjects in the world. But, math can help us understand some things that words can distort. Below is an algebraic depiction of the process of selling both put options and call options. We wanted to create a reference for selling both put options and call options that hopefully wouldn't confuse anyone. To better understand the process of how the put option and call option works, follow our formulas below. Put option. C equals 100. N equals quantity of C. B equals bid. S equals strike price. P equals premium. TC equals total dollar amount to be covered, CC equals commission and contract cost, AC equals actual cost, PP equals put profit, ROC equals return of capital, not profit, B times, C times N, equals P, S times, C times N, equals TC, TC plus CC1, minus, P minus CC2, equals AC, exercised, P minus CC equals PP, not exercised. TC equals ROC, not exercised. Call option. C equals 100, N equals quantity of C, B equals bid, S equals strike price, P equals premium, TS equals total dollar amount to be sold, BP equals buy price, SP equals sell price, CC equals commission and contract cost, AC equals actual cost, CP equals call profit. B times, C times N, equals P, S times. C times N, equals TS. TS minus BP minus CC2, plus, P minus CC1, equals AC, negative value, or CP, positive value, exercised, uncovered. P minus CC1, plus, SP minus BP minus CC2, equals CP, exercised, covered. P minus CC equals CP, not exercised. Note, C represents one option contract. First CC is for option transaction, second CC is for cover transaction. And now, passive income. 8 hours a day, 40 hours a week is the minimum amount of time that most middle class, full time workers spend at their jobs. They trade their time and labor for just enough cash to pay their bills and expenses, maybe have enough for recreational activities, and hopefully save enough for the future. But the honest truth is most people barely have enough for their bills. And if a person chooses recreational activities so they can spend time with their family, they are probably not saving enough for the future. The hard reality of our current economy and monetary system is that with one stream of income limited by your time and labor, you will never save enough for the future. With the four economic forces working against you, it is impossible to save any substantial amount of cash with one stream of income, which is limited by your time and labor. One of the best ways to generate cash that isn't limited by your time and labor is to create passive income. While that is good advice, it is hard to do if you don't know the most efficient and practical ways to implement this advice. With all the business opportunities, pyramid schemes and outright scams circulating through the economy, it is difficult to decipher what will actually work. Well let's put it into perspective here. If you have to continuously work to generate income through a so-called business opportunity and someone else is reaping the benefits of your so-called opportunity, then that so-called opportunity is nothing more than a second job. See our business opportunity fallacy report. Real passive income should be recurring monthly or quarterly from you doing business once. 
two of the best methods we have discovered to create passive income, cash that comes in consistently regardless of your time and labor, is through equity and debt. I will explain. First, I will explain equity. By investing in BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations, you can reap the benefits of owning a piece of a strong company that has a track record of not just paying dividends, but also growing them steadily over time. Dividends are monthly or quarterly payments made to shareholders from the profits earned by a company. When you invest in a publicly traded company for dividends or passive income and not depreciation, that is, capital gains, you are basically receiving a return on your investment in the form of a yield or a percentage of your investment per share per year. Your income will be determined by the market price you purchased your shares at, multiplied by the annual yield, divided by the number of annual payments, multiplied by the number of shares you hold a position in or own. If you never close your position or sell your shares and the dividend is never cancelled, you will continue to receive a steady payment from the company. Obviously if the dividend is increased, decreased or cancelled, your payment will coincide. If you purchase more stock, your dividend will increase according to number of shares you purchased. Next, I will explain debt. Unsecured promissory notes, or notes, are debt instruments. A note is a written promise by one party to pay back a loan to another party. Payments are usually made monthly. A note holder is the creditor, and the one who promises to pay is the debtor. The same way banks use debt to get rich you can do the same, and reap the same benefits. By purchasing unsecured promissory notes from a Securities Exchange Commission ECC, registered platform, you can effectively play the role of a bank without the time-consuming, tedious paperwork and regulations. Notes provide a fairly reliable, fixed cash flow in the form of principal and interest payments made over a predetermined period of time. Unsecured promissory notes originate in a bank that issues these notes though an SEC registered platform. By purchasing notes, you are securing passive income for the term of the note. Unsecured promissory notes are usually a good investment when credit is provided to creditor the individuals. Because every transaction in a capital gains business structure only pays once and has to be duplicated repeatedly to maintain a steady cash flow. You cannot accurately forecast operating income, earnings before interest and taxes, but after operating expenses, the same way you can with a passive income business structure. In a passive income business structure, business is conducted once and continues to pay a steady cash flow. Here's how it works with our strategy. Dividends, this is equity income. You purchase 1,000 shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share. XYZ stock pays an annual dividend of $1 per share which works out to a quarterly dividend of 25 cents per share, or in this case $250. Let's say for example, after your purchase of XYZ stock you have zero cash in your brokerage account and you opt to receive the dividends as payment. Assuming that the dividend isn't lowered, each quarter your cash holdings will increase by $250. Payments Quarter 1, plus $250, $250, Quarter 2, plus $250, $500, Quarter 3, plus $250, $750, Quarter 4, plus $250, $1,000, Quarter 1, next year, plus $250, $1,250. As long as XYZ stock is paying a dividend and you are a shareholder, you will receive that distribution of profits from the company. Interest, this is debt income. Interest is simply periodic payments made by the borrower, which are in excess of the principal loan amount. When a borrower makes payments, a majority of the payment goes to service the interest in the beginning. As the note is paid off, more of the payment goes to the principal amount of the loan. Payments are usually amortized and made monthly in fixed amounts over a fixed period of time. Theoretically, the less creditworthy the borrower is, the higher the risk of non-payment and default. Conversely, the more creditworthy the borrower is, the less likely they will default on the loan. This is pretty simple. A fully amortized loan will have principal and interest fixed into each payment made by the borrower. Their monthly payments will stay the same but the amount of the payment that goes towards interest decreases as the loan balance diminishes. Here's an example of a $1,000 loan at 5% interest over one year, fully amortized. Amortization table, monthly. Loan amount, $1,000. Number of payments, 
Interest rate 5.0%. Monthly payment $85.61. Total paid $1,027.29. Interest paid $27.29. Payoff date Jan 9, 2014. And now, compounded returns. The amount of information available to everyday people that isn't shared or advertised is astonishing. There are published government documents that affect our everyday lives we know nothing about. There are policies being made that impact our purchasing power that we know nothing about. And, there are financial opportunities out there that can't turn our rags into bags of riches that we know nothing about. But, the fact of the matter is, it is not meant for you to know this information. If you are lucky enough to stumble upon something of value and figure out how to use it, then kudos to you. However, if you are like the majority of people who don't know and don't seek out a better way, you will continue to take whatever is given to you by the government, the banks and the corporations. If you want power and control over your wealth, you must take it. If you want freedom, you must take that as well. One way to achieve power and freedom is through wealth. If you take control of your income and investments and create enough wealth, you should in essence become financially free. There is a simple and effective method in which you can take control of your income and exponentially increase your wealth. This is a published secret that is not advertised because Wall Street cannot profit from it. They have lobbied government to make it illegal for businesses to advertise this legal investment strategy. By investing in an 801k, or what is formerly known as a dividend reinvestment plan, or DRIP, through a publicly traded company's stock transfer agent, you can effectively compound your returns by having your dividends reinvested into the company to purchase more stock. This can compound your returns by up to as much as four times your initial investment without ever adding another dime. You can even increase your initial investment by as much as eight times by purchasing additional stock each month. You can also purchase stock directly from some publicly traded companies via a direct stock purchase plan through their stock transfer agent. Compounded returns from stocks are basically when your dividends purchase more shares of a stock which therefore increases your dividend and allows you to buy more shares of stock. Instead of making gains based solely on your initial investment, you make gains off of the new compounded amount. Probably the best way to see the benefit of your 801k is to invest in BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and other fundamentally sound corporations. In today's financial system, interest rates are near zero. This means that banks pay almost nothing to borrow money from the Federal Reserve and in turn, pay you nothing to hold your deposits. Plus, with the September 13, 2012 announcement of QE3 by Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, more inflation is set to hit the economy, further devaluing your purchasing power. Savings accounts, treasury bonds, CDs and money market accounts cannot keep up with the level of inflation. A mechanism that can compound your returns and beat inflation is the only way to preserve the value of your dollar-denominated holdings. How does it work? Let's say you purchase 1,000 shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share. XYZ pays an annual dividend of $1 per share, which works out to a quarterly dividend of 25 cents per share, or in this case $250. Let's say for example you have $50,000 in your brokerage account and you opt to have the dividends reinvested instead of receiving them as payment. Assuming that the dividend isn't lowered or stopped, each quarter your position in XYZ stock will increase and your dividend will in turn increase, compounding your returns significantly over time as follows. This example also keeps the price the same for the sake of the example, reinvestment, quarter 1, $250 purchases 50 new shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share bringing your new position, number of shares owned to 1050 and a new dividend of $262.50 to be reinvested. Quarter 2, $262.50 purchases 52.5 new shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share bringing your new position to 1102 and a new dividend of $275.50 to be reinvested. Quarter 3, $275.50 purchases 55.1 new shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share bringing your new position to 1157 and a new dividend of $289.25 to be reinvested. 
Kawarta for $289.25 purchases 57.85 new shares of XYZ stock at $5 a share bringing your new position to 1214 and a new dividend of $303.50 to be reinvested. Not only is this a powerful investment strategy that can significantly increase your wealth, but it also allows you to rest assured that your investment is growing. Banks pay you pennies at best in today's economy. Saving cash in a bank and depending on interest from your deposits is basically financial suicide. Cash has to be moving through the economy in order for it to have any true value. Reinvesting your dividends into more shares of stock keeps your cash circulating. This automatically increases your position in the company and therefore increases the value of your holdings. And now, Hyperinflation Hedge by converting a portion of your dollar-denominated savings into precious metals, namely gold and silver, you can preserve your purchasing power and protect your wealth from hyperinflation and subsequent economic collapse. Hyperinflation is the result of excessive and exponential increase in the money, that is, currency, supply. Once hyperinflation hits, prices increase significantly and the purchasing power of a currency is destroyed, like in the former Soviet Union, Zimbabwe or Argentina. Once the currency is destroyed, the economy eventually collapses. Any wealth denominated in that currency is not destroyed, but rather transferred to those who had the foresight to own precious metals and commodities. Gold and silver are the only commodities that are monetized units of exchange, and are accepted worldwide as a hedge against hyperinflation. Gold and silver in essence preserve purchasing power and any accumulated wealth. Between quantitative easing from the Federal Reserve and bad fiscal policy from the U.S. government, the U.S. dollar is slowly losing its status as the reserve currency of the world. Countries are finding ways to circumvent the petrodollar, using barter systems of oil for gold, or currency swaps. The U.S. economy is heading towards a hyperinflationary collapse of the currency, which will stem from the Federal Reserve and the U.S. government trying to avert deflationary events like market crashes and subsequent recessions. Only those who own physical gold and silver will be able to preserve their purchasing power and have any means of true wealth recognized worldwide in a post-petrodollar global economy. Unlike dollars, euros, pounds, yuan or any other currency, the wealth of precious metals are outside of the control of the banks and any government. How does it work? Gold and silver are the only monetized precious metals accepted throughout the world. But, in an artificial, centrally manipulated, debt-based fiat world, Gold and silver have been slept on as being a store of value. Gold and silver have been a store of value for 5,000 years, and will continue to be a store of value for 5,000 more. Here you will see how gold and silver keep up with inflation and safeguard your current monetary value. For the sake of this example, gold, AU, will be $1,500 an ounce, and silver, AG, will be $30. Remember, inflation is an increase in the currency supply. Therefore, more cash is chasing finite and limited goods, services and commodities. The value you invest today into precious metals is safe from any hyperinflationary money printing or quantitative easing by the Federal Reserve that will devalue the currency and decrease the purchasing power of your savings. In our example, inflation is 2% per year. Year 1. Gold equals $1,530, silver equals $30.06. Year 2. Gold equals $1,560.60, silver equals $30.66, year 3. Gold equals $1,591.81, silver equals $31.27, year 4. Gold equals $1,623.64, silver equals $31.89, year 5. Gold equals $1,656.11, silver equals $32.52, year 6. Gold equals $1,689.23, silver equals $33.17. Assuming that this chart is correct in the 2% annual inflation calculation, gold, AU, and silver, AG, keep up with inflation naturally. The only way they don't keep up with inflation is when prices are artificially suppressed by the government or central banks. Either way, gold and silver continue to be a store of value because they cannot be artificially inflated by the banks.
And now, value appreciation. By investing in BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations that regularly engage and share buybacks, you can place yourself in a favorable position to increase the overall value of your shares, and thus increasing your ownership percentage. Share buybacks decrease the number of outstanding shares a company has, therefore making each remaining share worth more to the shareholder. Just like when less currency is circulating in the economy, or we enter a deflationary stage and each dollar's value increases, share buybacks cause a stock's value to appreciate sort of in the same way. By investing in WDDGs, you are inherently investing in the most financially stable, market-dominant companies in the world. So, for the most part, your cash is safe for being invested in these companies, and some BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, and fundamentally sound corporations as a shareholder or unit holder than it is placed in a bank as an account holder. And they pay you a dividend for being a shareholder. But, what most people don't know is that some of these companies reinvest excess capital to buy back shares of stock instead of increasing dividends. This is good. Why is this good? Well, through a share buyback plan, remaining shareholders are practically receiving a stealth dividend from the company. This increases the overall value of their shares. Best of all, this stealth dividend is tax-free. How does it work? Value appreciation is something that you don't specifically have control over. You can either get it through price inquiries or through a stealth dividend provided by the company. But, by purchasing shares in companies that engage in what is called a share buyback, you can essentially increase your odds of realizing this value appreciation in addition to any price increases. Share buybacks work like this. Let's say there are 10 million shares of XYZ stock outstanding at $5 per share, which would give XYZ a market cap, number of shares outstanding times the stock price of $50 million. Now, if earnings per share, EPS is $1, and price to earnings ratio is 5, 5 times earnings, that would mean earnings are $10 million. If XYZ initiates and completes a share buyback of 2.5 million shares, that would leave 7.5 million shares outstanding. The new EPS of XYZ would be $1.33, a 33% increase. How did this happen and how did I get this number? 10 million units, shares, were chasing $10 million, hence the $1 per share. When XYZ bought back 2.5 million units, they took 25% of the units that were chasing the 10 million in earnings out of circulation. This left only 7.5 million units chasing 10 million in earnings. Divide 10 million in earnings by 7.5 million units and you get $1.33, your new earnings per share. The earnings of each share, and therefore the value of each share, were increased by 33%, 33 cents increase divided by the initial $1 EPS. This is powerful. A strategy a publicly traded company can initiate for its shareholders, a stealth, tax-free dividend. And finally, family banking system. By establishing a whole life insurance policy, you can effectively create your own private family banking system. You will not only have a lifelong death benefit that you will be able to pass to your family upon your death tax-free, but you will also have your own private, easily accessible banking system you can use to finance most ordinary large purchases, for example, a house, a car or an investment property. Whether you know this or not, whole life insurance policies are life insurance policies that are in force for the duration of your life. However, contrary to belief, you only pay the premium for a certain amount of years. These policies accumulate a compounded cash savings or cash value that you can borrow from at any time, for any reason. As long as your premiums are paid on time and the policy doesn't lapse, any loans taken out on the policy are tax-free. Since loans are collateralized by the death benefit, credit checks are not required for loans. The interest you pay back to the policy is basically going back towards compounding the cash value of the policy. A family banking system may be known by other names, but in essence, it is your own personal banking system via whole life insurance. Instead of paying the bank's interest for financing large purchases you would have normally made anyway, you can't pay yourself the interest instead through payments you make back to the policy and save a lot of money on interest in the process. You are in essence, financing your own purchases, paying yourself the interest, which compounds your cash value, and establishing something that will secure your family financially. 
This is one of the best kept public secrets that banks and corporations use religiously. The poor and middle class have been misled, miseducated and diverted from the benefits of whole life insurance. If you have ever been told, buy term and invest the difference, it's because they know if told to do so, the poor and middle class will buy a term life insurance policy. They also know that the odds of having to pay that policy are slim, so they will pocket every premium the policyholder pays. And, if the policyholder decides they want more life insurance to continue protecting their family, the insurance company can jack up the premium for the new policy. To add to this horrible advice of buy term and invest the difference, not many people know how to actually invest the difference. Most people will either spend the money they received from the closed whole life policy or they will invest the cash into a status quo investment vehicle, which won't make them rich either. So either way, the poor and middle class are losing money and staying broke. Buy term and invest the difference is status quo advice. How about buy whole life, build your cash value, and then borrow from it to purchase an investment property? Now that sounds like great advice. How does it work? With the family banking system, you effectively become your own bank and finance your own large purchases with your own whole life insurance policy. You pay yourself, and the insurance company, interest on the loan you received from the cash value savings, which in turn compounds your cash value much faster over time. The loan is collateralized by the face value of the policy so there is no recourse or collections. If you don't pay the loan back, just tax consequences. If the policy lapses or the loan goes unpaid, you must pay taxes on the cash as income. You can substantially reduce the amount of money you would have lost if you had used a bank to finance your purchase. This is truly a life benefit more than a death benefit. You can access this cash anytime, for any reason whatsoever, and reap the benefits of paying yourself the interest you would have otherwise given the banks, benefits you reap while you're alive. Warning, although this can be an essential tool in your financial planning, whole life insurance can be substantially more expensive depending on various factors like age, face value of the policy and the term of payments. Please see our recommended resource in the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report for more information. And now, UEH Investment Strategy Overview. Incorporation, forming legal entities, capital gains, trading options, passive income, dividends and interest income, compounded returns, 801k dividend reinvestment plan, value appreciation, stealth dividends, hyperinflation hedge, precious metals, and family banking system, whole life insurance, UEH Investment Discipline. Note. We have laid out the investment strategy and how to generate a sustainable and reliable income, but now we will explain the discipline or the rules to follow when investing. These are simply recommendations in what we are doing. This is in no way financial or investment advice. Consult a professional or simply do your own due diligence and research. Trade, sell, put options on BDCs, MLPs, REITs. RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations you want to own a position in and trade, sell, covered call options solely on BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations you own a position in. Buy BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations only when they are undervalued. Undervalued can be considered 10 times earnings or less, 15 earnings or less with the most dominant, stable companies. Receive the dividend payments from the monthly dividend pairs and the MLPs and reinvest the dividends from the remaining dividend pairs. Convert 10 to 20% of all monthly income to gold and silver bullion. Use the other 80 to 90% of the monthly income to trade put options on BDCs, MLPs, REITs. RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations that you want to own shares in and trade, sell, covered call options on BDCs, MLPs, REITs, RTs, WDDGs and fundamentally sound corporations that you own shares in. Remain disciplined and stay focused on the plan. Don't divert away from the plan. Repeat steps 1 through 6. Definitions. World Dominant Dividend Grower, WDDG. These are blue chip stocks. They are probably the safest investments in the stock market. They pay a quarterly dividend and grow that dividend steadily over the years. WDDGs generally aren't adversely affected by recessions or bad economic conditions because they are number one or dominant in their industry. Master Limited Partnership, MLP. 
These are publicly traded limited partnerships. They usually invest in oil, natural gas, infrastructure or commodities and are provided tax-exempt status by law as long as they distribute 90% of their earnings to unit holders. Because of government incentives to invest in these structures, there may be favorable tax treatment of income received and expenses of the partnership for unit holders. Please do your own research. Real Estate Investment Trust, REIT. These structures can be private or public companies. They mainly invest in, manage and operate income producing real estate. Once they elect to be taxed as a REIT and they are approved, they are provided tax-exempt status by law as long as they distribute 90% of their earnings to unit holders. Royalty Trust, RT. These structures can be private or public companies. Royalty trusts hold the beneficial interest to receive royalties or a percentage of the sale of oil and gas or mining resources. Once they elect to be taxed as a royalty trust and they are approved, they are provided tax-exempt status by law as long as they distribute 90% of their earnings to unit holders. Business Development Company, BDC. BDCs provide financing for small cap and middle market companies, provide management and consultation services and receive either equity in the company or interest payments. Since BDCs invest in companies with proven products and services or show solid growth potential, there is little risk associated with the BDC's investments. BDCs are not taxed at the federal level as long as they distribute 90% of their capital gains, interest and other investment income to their shareholders. Unspoken of Assets MLPs, REITs RTs and BDCs are unspoken of asset classes of stock not advertised to the general public, just like the 801k plan, or any investment that would give the middle class person an advantage to achieve wealth. WDDGs are more widely advertised, but are not singled out for the benefits we have mentioned here. They are touted more for their brand recognition and high trading volume. The Business Model it's probably safe to say that most people don't start a business because they don't have a product or service in which to justify starting a business. But, not only is not having a product or service a bad reason to dismiss the notion of starting a business, but it is a misconception to think you need a product or service to have a business. The fact of the matter is, you can create a business, and a profitable one, without ever selling one product or providing one second of service. This may sound far-fetched, but this is a fact. Not only is this a fact, but it's being done by some of the wealthiest people on earth. We have given you the strategy, but now, we will show you how to apply the business. Most people have heard of Warren Buffett. He is a billionaire investor. He has been noted for his keen investment instincts and his strategy of investing in a business as fundamentals and not investing based on technical analysis or market trends. Buffett is also chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway is a multinational conglomerate holding company that owns sizable interests in and wholly owns various insurance companies, banks, and other fundamentally sound businesses. Berkshire Hathaway started out in the textile business, but eventually became a holding company, a company that doesn't produce goods or services, but instead owns other companies. When Buffett bought a controlling interest in the company and fired then CEO C. Barry Stanton, after Stanton made a verbal offer to buy back Buffett's shares in the company at one price and then presented a slightly different written offer. Buffett's investing style and Berkshire Hathaway's business model are incredible, but not entirely unique or impossible to duplicate. The only obstacles involved with duplicating Buffett's investing strategy, even on a small scale are efficient knowledge, disciplined focus on an industry or sector, implementation of the strategies and capital to move forward. In your situation, the knowledge has been provided, the discipline has been laid out, and the strategy clearly presented, but the only obstacle that may remain is adequate capital. You may say, well, I don't have it right now. If that is the case, our advice is, don't wait until you have it, before you get started. If you wait until you have it, you will never have it to get started with. The UEH allows you to get started with as little as $25. Yes, I said $25. Using the interest income part of the passive income strategy, you can easily begin implementing your own UEH. We provide you a credible resource to get started with in the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. Remember, this is your business, and you will reap 100% of the benefits of your actions. So, here's the business model. Your newly formed entity will effectively be either a holding company, 
holding ownership interest, or stock in other businesses or investment company, making private investments on behalf of the owners. It doesn't really matter which way you decide to go. The main thing is, you will not be selling a product or service. You will be investing in businesses, trading options, and receiving dividends and interest income. Because you are not providing a product or service that provides value to others, rather you are investing to increase your own value, your business is your own owner's equity. Your mission is to increase that owner's equity and owner's value. Creating a smaller privately owned version of Berkshire Hathaway is a strategy that can prove financially beneficial and rewarding. Look at Warren Buffett, he's almost 90 years old and still has a passion for acquiring businesses like Heinz. Most of your income should be from dividends and interest through passive investing, which will allow you as the management to focus on the capital gains income, inflation hedging, family banking, and eventual development of subsidiaries, if you so choose. This strategy will effectively reduce your company's risk and liability. Please, take the time to incorporate. This is your foundation. After you have officially established your new entity, the next thing on your list is to open a business bank account, a business brokerage account and a business online merchant account. Remember, business accounts, not personal accounts. Choose a bank you want to do business with, choose a broker you want to place trades with, and establish and verify your merchant account. We provide your resources for reference in the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. Completing these steps will put you in the driver's seat to begin building your wealth through the UEH investment strategy. So, now you know how to implement the UEH as a business model. You have effectively graduated the Ultimate Economic Hedge class. Thank you for attending this class. This concludes our class webinar. As we stated in the free webinar video, this is not a smoke and mirror presentation. This is all real, legitimate and official information. But, we cannot guarantee you any level of success. Your level of success is dependent on you actually implementing the strategies we have taught you. There are no pyramid schemes, or so-called business opportunities here. Whatever success you achieve will have nothing to do with us. You are responsible for your success, and you will reap 100% of the benefits of your own efforts. If you would like to have access to our Ultimate Economic Hedge Investment Strategies and any subsequent updates or changes, then go to ultimate-economic-hedge.blogspot.com to purchase our Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. That's ultimate-economic-hedge.blogspot.com. The UEH report provides the UEH investment strategies, education about money and how money actually works, basic economics and some tips to success. It also provides a list of resources you can use to help you get started. This information is priceless. You won't find information of this caliber anywhere else. So, purchase access to our Ultimate Economic Hedge Report. What does it cost, you ask? It's a one-time cost of only $39.95 for unlimited access to the report and any updates, and free unlimited email correspondence with our president. Any questions you have pertaining to the Ultimate Economic Hedge Report, including the investment strategies can be answered by our president. But, act quickly. Just like the class, webinar, access to our, UEH report is limited. It may be a while before we make this offer available again. Secure your access now before it's no longer available. Once again, we want to thank you for attending our Ultimate Economic Hedge class, webinar. We hope you found this class helpful and informative. Once again, I am Jada, virtual assistant for the Ultimate Economic Hedge class, webinar. One last thing before we go. This is very important and it involves a little assistance on your part. You see, we want to make our presence known. We want to educate and help more people, just like you. But, to really make our presence known, we need a buzz. This is crucial, and we cannot do it alone. We need the voices and the support of our UEH class, webinar subscribers to bring our presence to a larger audience. And the way to do that is through social media. So, here is the mission. If you can help us gain 500,000 followers on Twitter and 500,000 likes on Facebook, we will have a very special surprise for our Ultimate Economic Hedge class, webinar subscribers. Now on the other hand, if you can help us reach 1 million followers on Twitter and 1 million likes on Facebook, we will have, not one very special surprise, but two very special surprises. But, none of this can happen without you. 
So, it's very simple, and you are right where you need to be. Simply click the like button to like us on Facebook, and click the follow at TBT2B, at your EH report and at MT leader buttons to follow all three. Next, spread the word and have your top 10 friends, or even your top 5 friends like us as well. And, when we post a new Twitter update, simply retweet to your followers. This should help us reach both milestones. If we succeed, you succeed. Let's make this happen, so we can get this party started. That's at TBT2B. At your EH report, and, at MT leader. Once again, that's at TBT2B. At your EH report, and, at MT leader. Make sure you are logged into both Twitter and Facebook, then simply, click, 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 and, click.